Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Simi Solatiko. Amid the tension in the ancient city of Kano due to the Emir ship tussle, the Kano State Police Command has deployed a more armed personnel to the two palaces housing the contending Emirs in the metropolitan local government areas. According to reports, all hunters guarding the two palaces have been withdrawn following the arrival of uh, more policemen at both palaces. The Kano State Commissioner of Police, Husseini Gumel, confirmed the development during an interview with newsmen. Gomel emphasized the necessity of the action, saying the equipped and armed personnel were deployed to handle any unforeseen circumstances around the identified areas. Meanwhile, a federal high court in Kano State has ruled that the Kano Emirates Council of 2024, as passed by the State House of Assembly and signed into law by the governor, remained valid but nullified all steps taken by the state government after the court's earlier interim order, which had effectively stopped the implementation of the law, pending the determination of a petition filed by the state government. The court effectively endorsed the sacking of Amino Adu, Bayero, and others as emirs, but also nullified the reinstatement of Mohamedou Sanusi II as the 16th emir of Kano, as part of consequences for actions by the state government for disobeying the interim order of the court. Let's get more legal perspective. Barrister Buhari Yusuf joins me on the program. Thank you for making out time for us, sir. Now, uh, despite the fact that the Kano Emirates Council Law of 2024 was upheld by the state's federal high court, thereby legalizing the removal of Aminu Ado Bayero and other emirs from their positions, the reinstatement of Muhammad San, uh, Sanusi II as the 16th emir of Kano was nullified. Now, what's your reaction to this ruling by the court? Well, again, that opens up for another uh, a question. The legitimacy of the law that threw up the appointment of Sinusi was validated by the, the, the ruling of the court. But the action thereof was questioned and in fact ruled against by the same judge. Now the problem is, don't forget there, are, there is one issue raised by Kano State Government, that we were never served with any process from the federal government, from the federal high court, before the appointment or the instatement of Sunusi. And now the court was put in the tax to prove that indeed there was service, and the proof of service made available to population. And I think up to today, it has not been properly analyzed and solved as to whether there was service and they acted and they acted against the ruling of the court. Now, with the position of the court of maintenance of status quo, maintenance of status quo is, uh, is, sub is subject of different interpretation. Is it before our arrival or before the position taken by uh, the litigants? This issue too creates a lot of problem because status quo anti can be can be interpreted from different uh, uh, understanding of the litigants. To the, to to come to state government status quo anti will mean before will mean after will, will mean after the action has been done, which makes no sense of the ruling, and that is the situation. And I think uh we, our, our judges should be very very careful otherwise politicians will drag, will drag their very beautiful names into the mood and uh we are in a situation where uh politics is becoming too bitterly contested and therefore our political class need to be very very circumspect otherwise we might truncate this nursing democracy that we are benefiting from now, there are some who think that the court has ruled in a diplomatic manner, just as uh, how some others believe that the uh, police are taking sides with the federal government. And what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think the federal government is correcting that impression because I learned and I read and I want to believe that uh, security apparatus too or security personnel are now deployed to Sunusi, Lamid or Sunusi. So I want to believe that that has been balanced. Whether the question... Uh, whether the ruling was meant to diplomatically set the question. Yes, there are a lot of legal minds that believe that the, that the ruling might be described as high sound nothing, means there is nothing to rely on. And in fact, uh, uh, further interrogation of that ruling would mean that uh, 
cannot stay government will not be in any would not be in any uh, 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 breach of that ruling if it continues with the process as it started because uh, actually uh, 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 so many things are not being properly put in perspective for people to really appreciate so this is where we are whether it is diplomatically uh, created to solve the problem of course rulings and judgment are meant to solve problems if this will solve the problem but i don't think so but at the end of it all i want to believe that some people are not putting aminu uh, uh, um, aminu Bayero for just to embarrass him because at the end of it all the state governor would have the power to appoint whoever he wants to. So at the end of the judgment, whether the judgment goes in uh, in Aminu's favor, the governor will still have his residue power to, to depose him and to appoint his own emir. So I don't think uh, I would like to uh, you know advise here that the gentleman sh shouldn't allow himself to be humiliated at the end of it all. Because at the end of it all, the governor, particularly with the state assembly, will have an unfitted right to appoint and to depose any emir as they so wishes. That's the, that's, the, that's the problem of the law. So Mohammed Sanusi II was reinstated as the 16th emir. That's according to the state government prior to uh, a controversial interim order that the court claimed the governor disregarded while approving the Kano Emirates Council repeal bill of 2024. However, the presiding judge, as Justice Abdullahi Lehman, has ordered also ordered the parties to maintain the status quo while the matter was being decided on. He added that although the defendants were aware of the court's interim order, they chose to disregard it and carry out the law's uh, implementation. Now, this decision are quite unclear. Can you help us understand, you know, give us more details as to this ruling? Well, it's left for the, uh, for the court to prove that indeed the, the action of the government was uh, contemptuous. What can they do? Proof of evidence. A bit for uh, a service and what, uh, 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 any process that will prove that indeed there was a service delivered and accepted by them. Mere statement by the governor that I had there is in the, in the social media a service doesn't amount to a proper service. That's the position of the law. But it's left for the court to indeed prove that, in, uh, that, that the service of the court uh, reach you and appropriately too. That will assist in uh, taking care of that situation. But like I said, at the end of it all, if you sit down and you go through the laws of... Uh, Kano state government, uh, Kano state, as it affects the appointment, the removal, and what have you of emirs, reside completely with the governor. At the end of the judgment, we have seen the case of uh, Jokolo. He has been in the court for almost 20 something years, got in judgment in, in the state high court, got in judgment in the appeal court. Now there is but there is nothing to be done. At the end of it all, even if the Supreme Court later rule in his favor, they will still face the state government. They might not like to appoint him or to allow him to continue. They might use the procedure seen to be fluid and to be addressed and later to be disposed. So the problem is that uh, they are at the mercy of it. But don't also forget that there will not be any radical change that will change that position. Because they are not elected people, they are not under several mandate of the citizen, they are there by sheer acceptance of the governor. And don't forget to, no court, removal of Emir from the seat does not amount to infringement of his fundamental human right because it's just Emir privilege. There is nothing fundamental there. You must be Emir. You can only cruise to that seat by the agreement and acceptance of the governor. That's the position as it is today. And I don't see any radical approach that will change the position of the law. It has been everywhere in this country. And it has been read from the colonial authority. Uh, in Kano, colonial authorities deposed a lot of their rulers. The military government did the same. Rimi was about to remove the father of this Aminu 
when Rizin uh, was allowed to play. So it has been like this. When a uh, Ganduja was happy using the same law to appoint Aminu, he could remember or he could have this in his mind that indeed one governor will come one day and think and, and look at it from a different perspective. And this is where we are. But are we now in a situation of a new governor in Kano State and new emir? That's, that's a question that the people of Kano need to sit down and iron it out. But for now, just like Ganduje enjoyed the prerogative of his office to depose and, and Sunusi, and I think he had good lawyers that advised him not to contest the, his removal, his the, the position. He shouldn't contest that. But he should go for the for, for the enforcement of his fundamental right when he was removed and sent to uh, one place in Nasarawa State. And of course, he succeeded that. And if he had contested the removal, he could have lost in court. The same thing with this situation. We should be honest to ourselves. Now, how can you be an emir in the state with a good relationship with the governor who pays your salary? We should even forget that the emir of Kano is under the local government where he resides. So how can you? We should be a little bit uh, imaginative so that we have this problem solved and solved forever. Let's now discuss the different rulings from both the state and federal high courts, you know, in the state. Now, which of these rulings should uh, precede the other in this case? Well, to be candid, when you look at uh, section 200 and, and I think uh, 58 of our constitution, the jurisdiction of the federal high courts are there. Aside from the issue of fundamental human rights, uh, federal high court doesn't have anything to do with uh, the issue of traditional institutions in the states. They are created by state laws. Therefore, state high courts are properly are more appropriately placed to handle the situation of traditional institutions. And then uh, these locus classicals, uh, from the Supreme Court that affects the, the, the judgment of uh, uh, Tukur versus Gongola State Government. You saw the position. The, the elucidation was, was quite clear as to who has jurisdiction to handle the issue of appointment, disposition, and the removal of emirs and local chiefs in Nigeria, not just in northern Nigeria. So who, who has more right is clearly stated by our constitution because they are creation of local laws. And therefore, local courts are more equipped to take care of the situation because they are more in a in historical position to understand the intricacies involved in the appointment and the removal of these emirs. Just like I said, the laws are created by the assemblies. Therefore, federal laws are not going to apply there. That is why uh, uh, my Lord Liman cleverly avoided any issue that has to do with the laws creating the, 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 the 2024 laws and the removal and then the, uh, the, the reinstatement of Sunusi. He refused to dwell on that because he knows he's going to find himself in a very cumbersome situation. So, state high courts are more a coup to handle the issue of uh, uh, local uh, issues. Okay. And that's the situation. And uh, I, I pray that reason, but I, like I said at the beginning of this conversation, these issues will keep on coming. Because here you have somebody that is a holder of, somebody that is a holder of sovereign mandate, contesting power, with somebody who has a traditional residue authority that is not legislated, that is not recognized by the law, and contesting on the same space, there is always the likelihood that problem is going to brew, and problem is brewing. The earlier the traditional rulers uh, realize the fact that uh, they operate at the mercy of the government, the better for them. Because at the end of it all, uh, the payment of salaries, maintenance of the policies, maintenance of the staff of the palaces and everything inherent in, 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 in the execution of traditional institutions in any given state is borne by the state government. Now where is the presence of the federal government? And uh, we shouldn't uh, expose our security 
platform to this kind of ridiculous situation where they are alleged to have visibly taken side with one of the parties in any crisis particularly local crisis in the state. Well, it's been an insightful discussion with legal practitioner Barista Buhari Yusuf. Thank you, sir, for sharing your Thank insight. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. We'll take a break here. We'll continue the discussion when the program returns. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still discussing developments from the Kano Emirship Tosso, and joining me to discuss further is a journalist based in Kano State, Hassan Ibrahim. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, Hassan. Now, the heavy presence of security agents in the palaces of both emirs and contenders for the Kano Emirates tool. Now, what do you think of this? What do you think this portends for people of the Asian city who, of course, all separate allegiance to either one of them? Um, thank you very much, uh, Steve. I think uh, the people of Kano are not very confused about which area their allegiance is due for. Uh, if you see what's happening in Kano, uh, most of the district heads, I think about 40 of them, have already paid their allegiance to His Highness Muhammad II, and uh, for traditional title holders, I think more than 90% of them have also paid their allegiance to Muhammad Yusufi II. And uh, government officials, on the other hand, from council chairman to serving members, House of Representatives, to senators and uh, Government officials in general have also paid their allegiance to Muhammad II. And one thing about the people of Kano is, if you go back to history, they have never disobeyed constituted authorities. Once somebody is occupying the throne of Malam Ibrahim, that's who decides in the palace of Gidan Rufa, is automatically the area. He who has uh, the Wukanyanka, the staff of office, the Tawaiyamasu, and all of that is the authentic area of Kano. So I think the people of Kano are more concerned uh, about uh, His Highness Muhammad Sunusi the second than they are with the other area. So what do you make of the comment made by the spokesman or for Governor Abai? Kabir Yusuf of Kano states that Sanusi Bature saying the ongoing Emirate tussle is a fight to finish. And he said that on national TV. Do you think that this is an insightful statement? I don't think it's really inciting. You understand? Because um, you see what's happening in Kano, like I said earlier, is an uh, issue of political shit show. The Emirates have been dragged into politics. And uh, there is no way, there is nothing we can do about it. This is just the fact. Uh, they've been penetrated into us. And definitely, definitely, uh, all these things must happen. And you know, for political office holders, all they care about is their peer masters. So uh, I think. Uh, so Lucy, though I think Tofa is just saying as a manner of speaking, he's only trying to tell people that it is not as serious as people think it is. I think that's just how I feel it is. So I don't think it's exciting. I don't think it will cause any mayhem. The court, the case is already in court and uh, they've been hearing already. And you see, there are lots of speculations. There are lots of uh, counter rule. There are lots of things with regards to this. And uh, everyone has what he has to say. So I don't think uh, it would be wrong for the government to say it is not as serious as people think it is. So if Sunusi is speaking on behalf of the governor, so be it.
Well, constitutionally, the governor has the right to dethrone an emir and to reappoint another, you know. Um, but it's different in this case. Why do you think that is? I think why uh, at first, uh, after the dethronement of uh, dethronement of uh, His Highness Amin Abu Bayeru, I think uh, there was a case filed against the state government, the state house of assembly, the commissioner of police, and what have you, uh, challenging uh, the dethronement that it's uh, an infringement on the freedom and uh, personal uh, rights. Uh, when this uh, suit was served, uh, there was a court order that stops uh, the whole process. I think uh, if at that time the government had drawn back and uh, realign and work in line with the constitution and the court order, I don't think uh, all this would have, have happened. It has happened uh, just, uh, I think, uh, less than five, six years ago, when Sunusi was dethroned. Uh, he actually never challenged his dethronement. He only challenged uh, his uh, exile. And then at, uh, after hearing up to, I think, the Supreme Court, and uh, he was uh, he was given the right to move freely, to live in wherever he wants to live. I think uh, why this back and forth is coming is because um, the government has not really looked at it from the legal perspective, like very well. Uh, it was done in a hurry and uh, they didn't actually pay, uh, they didn't actually put into cognizance the consequences of law and some of these things. That's why all these things are happening. But it's constitutional. The governor has the sole right to uh, to appoint, reinstate, dethrone, and what have you for an area. And uh, that right still sits with uh, His Excellency Abba Kabir Yusuf. And I don't think uh, this would go further. Now, with this entire this crisis hitting up in Kano over the MSU tussle, don't you think that, or do you think that this is some kind of distraction for the state governor and the people of Kano who go about or who are supposed to go about their daily activities peacefully? Uh, it's not really affecting the development of our states because uh, the governor uh, has uh, commissioned several projects after this. And he has started many other projects after this. And everything is just going, everyone is going uh, about his daily activities. I am at the office and nothing has stopped me. You see, I am not Amino Adu Bayaru. I don't know why he will not accept the tournament, but I am sure and certain that you cannot actually pay, uh, fight your paymasters. You cannot fight your employees. There's no way you force somebody to work with you. It's never going to happen. A governor appoints and the own emirs. You cannot actually force a governor to accept you as an emir. It's not possible. No matter how uh, this thing is being dragged, uh, I don't think I don't think he would uh, he would win this at the end of it. That's just it. But I'm not a lawyer actually, so I don't know much about law, but I don't like technically, like uh, in the real sense, I don't see him working with the governor again. Well, I'm afraid that's how much you can take. Mr. Ibrahim Hassan, thank you very much for speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. Well, that's all on this episode of the program. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.